In one of my recent videos, I argued that FingoChat.ai's responses are better than ChatGPT. The first comment was, oh yay, another rapper. My response to that was that AI, I think, is like the new operating system and what everyone calls a rapper is like software built on top of the AI operating system. Listen to what Andrej Karpathy at Y Combinator's AI Startup School had to say about this subject. But actually, I think the analogy that makes the most sense, perhaps, is that in my mind, LLMs have very strong kind of analogies to operating systems uh, in that this is not just electricity or water. It's not something that comes out of the tap as a commodity. Uh, this is, these are now increasingly complex software ecosystems, right? So uh, they're not just like simple commodities like electricity. And it's kind of interesting to me that the ecosystem is shaping in a very similar kind of way where you have a few closed source providers like Windows or Mac OS, and then you have an open source alternative like Linux. And I think for, uh, neural, for LLMs as well, we have a, kind of a few competing closed source uh, providers, and then maybe the Llama ecosystem is currently like maybe a close approximation to something that may grow into something like Linux. Again, I think it's still very early because these are just simple LLMs, but we're starting to see that these are going to get a lot more complicated. It's not just about the LLM itself, it's about all the tool use and the multimodalities and how all of that works. And so when I sort of had this realization a while back, I tried to sketch it out, and it kind of seemed to me like LLMs are kind of like a new operating system, right? So the LLM is a new kind of a computer. It's setting, it's kind of like the CPU equivalent. Uh, the context windows are kind of like the memory, and then the LLM is orchestrating memory and compute uh, for problem solving um, using all of these uh, capabilities here. And so definitely, if you look at it, it looks very much like an operating system from that perspective. Um, a few more analogies, for example, if you want to download an app, say I go to VS Code and I go to download, you can download VS Code and you can run it on Windows, Linux, or, or Mac in the same way as you can take an LLM app like Cursor and you can run it on GPT or Cloud or Gemini series, right? It's just a drop down. So it's kind of like similar in that way as well. Uh, more analogies that I think strike me is that we're kind of like in this 1960s-ish era where LLM compute is still very expensive for this new kind of a computer. And that forces the LLMs to be centralized in the cloud. And we're all just uh, sort of thin clients that interact with it over the network. And none of us have full utilization of these computers. And therefore, it makes sense to use time sharing where we're all just, you know, a, a dimension of the batch when they're running the computer in the cloud. If you look at some of the most successful AI products right now, a lot of people made fun of the products, calling them wrappers, saying you don't even have a real product. You're just building something on top of the real product, ChatGPT or Claude Code. You're not even a real business. They said this about Cursor. Cursor just went from zero to $500 million in ARR, annual recurring revenue, in just 30 months. That's only two and a half years. Chatbase is almost making $10 million a year and it is only about two and a half years old. In fact, the founder of Chatbase was recently on a Starter Story episode, and he had this to say about the whole rapper accusation. Last question that we ask everyone who comes on Starter Story, if you could go back two and a half years or however long it's been, stand on Yasser's shoulder, what would be your advice to young Yasser? Yeah, I think for me specifically, I wasn't thinking big enough in the beginning. My goal was to just get my 10K, move to Bali, live the uh, indie hacker lifestyle. I just realized, like, why not shoot for the stars, right? Why not build the first 100 million ARR bootstrap company? I was too worried that because everyone was saying it's like a chat GPT rapper, it's not gonna work. It, this this got into my head because it was true. It was just a chat GPT wrapper. So I think I wasn't aggressive enough. I was too shy about what I'm building. I was too reserved. I think if I go back, I would have moved a lot faster. I would have put more on the line. So yeah, just aim higher, I would say for me. The crazy thing about this statement is that he was still worried about the whole wrapper label even after growing this fast. Before we jumped on this call, you told me something crazy, which was that Chatbase went from zero to a million ARR in 117 days, which is less than half a year, just a couple months. That doesn't even seem believable to me. So I'd love if you broke down 
how that's even possible that an app can grow that fast and, and how yours did. Yasser's chat-based business was a rapper business, but it grew to a million dollars a year in revenue in 117 days. Lovable.dev, which I actually just made a reaction video about, went from zero to a hundred million dollars a year in revenue in just eight months. Lovable is another rapper AI business. Windsurf is another AI rapper business that just passed $100 million a year in revenue. Even though Replit is an older company, it wasn't until they built an AI rapper business that they went from $10 million a year to $100 million a year within nine months. I don't think these are going to be the exceptions into the future. I really think AI has become the new operating system. We should start thinking of it like another Windows or Mac OS or iOS. And we should think of these wrappers as the software built on top of AI. AI has now gotten advanced enough to where you can build really complex apps on top of AI. Listen to what Sam Altman recently had to say about the new capabilities of AI. I think we're in a really interesting time. We haven't been in one of these for a while, uh, but like right now, we're in an interesting time where the the product overhang relative to what the models like what the models are capable of is here the products that people have figured out to build is way down here. There's a huge, even if the models got no better, which of course they will, uh, there's a huge amount of new stuff to build. And also like last week, O3 cost five times as much as it did this week. And that's gonna keep going. I think people will be astonished at how much the price per performance falls. Um, we have an open source model coming out soon. I think people are gonna be, yeah. I don't want to like steal the team's glory and pre-announce this, but I think you all will be astonished. I think it will be like much better than you're hoping for. And the ability to like use it to run incredibly powerful models locally is going to like really, really surprise people on what's possible. Um, but so you have this world where like the model capability has gone into like a kind of new, like a very new realm. Um, the cost of the APIs are going to keep falling quite dramatically. The open source models are going to be super great. And I think we have not yet seen the level of new product innovation that the reasoning models are capable of, which makes sense. They're pretty new. But this is like an exceptional time to go build a company that takes advantage of this sort of new thing that exists, this sort of new square on a periodic table that no one has built with yet. So only in the last month, I think that we really started to see startups that are saying, OK, like reasoning models are different. You know, the whole interaction model is different and really building for that. What Sam Altman is saying is that with these new reasoning models, people haven't realized how powerful they are yet, but they really are like a new operating system. You can finally start building apps on top of AI that are pretty amazing. However, these would probably be described as wrappers. You are building something on top of AI. You're using AI as a new operating system and you're using wrappers as software. I think what Sam Altman is saying is that just like Windows was a new operating system that you could build all this new software on, which eventually led to the internet, you should start thinking of AI the same way. We're in a unique time right now. It's as if the computer has just been built. The Windows operating system just came out. You can now build software on it. We as developers should start thinking of AI like that. This is a new operating system. We're in a unique time where we can start building the software of the future. We're just going to have to get past the whole rappers comments. And you can even significantly improve the results of AI using tools like fingochat.com that make it really easy to save code, documentation, lists, spreadsheets, any kind of information you want the AI to know in its memory called the train of thought. Tools like this help guide the AI toward better responses. It knows how to generate more code that is similar to your previous code that you save to the train of thought or the memory. But what do you think? Do you think wrappers are the new software and AI is a new operating system? Or do you think I'm totally wrong? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you'd like to see more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.